So when you're thinking about doing your personal brand and you've got your blog and you've got your podcast and you've got all the things that you need in order to put your voice out there, you suddenly realize that maybe you don't know what to say or you don't know how to say it or maybe you don't know where exactly to put this stuff out. Well, we're going to cover the first two right here in this episode. It's episode 10. We've reached double digits. I'm excited. Let's get to it. Hello, everybody. Thanks for joining me. This is the Tim Atkins Does Digital Podcast. Hey, my name is Tim Atkins. I want to thank you for hanging out with me and uh, joining me on this uh, little episode here. Hey, we've reached double digits. A lot of people don't. And I was uh, wondering if I was ever going to do that myself. Like I said, it's been a long time since I've done one of these. And I apologize for not being on here sooner. Um, This is one of those things where uh, I tell people that they should do a certain thing and then I don't do it. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> you know, and, and if you were, remember back in the day, back when we were talking about back in episode two, when I first started this out, I guess maybe was it episode two, episode one? I don't remember. It was one of the early episodes uh, where I said that I was going to take you on the journey uh, with me as I start developing blog and podcast and that sort of thing. And it really wasn't going to be all rainbows and lollipops. It was going to and be kind of difficult sometimes. And there's going to be some hoops to jump through and uh, sometimes, uh, I wouldn't, um, be as consistent as I would like. And that's one of these things where I haven't been as consistent as I would like. And I apologize for that, but Hey, you know, I'm taking you on the journey. And, uh, if you are doing the same thing that I am, maybe you also struggle with a little bit of consistency and maybe you also struggle a little bit with coming up with content and things like that. So, uh, that's great because I do that as well. And uh, I'm going to try to follow my own advice, and it's going to be the advice that I give you right now because I wrote a lot of notes. This is something that I'm starting to do that I haven't done in the past. Usually I just kind of you know do it off the cuff, but taking some notes recently because I think it's, it's good to try to be organized when you start doing something like this. So at least I'm doing that part. Now, um, whenever they talk about putting out content, whenever people talk about putting out content – what you want to say and how you want to say it, because that's what people say. Sometimes they say, well, it's not what you say. It's how you say it. Well, it's actually both. Not only is it that, but it's, it's a third thing too. It's uh, what you say. It's, it's how you say it. And then also it's where you say it as well. I have a theory of mine that people a couple of years ago, when they were talking about blogs, they were talking about not necessarily even podcasts a few years ago, but just blogs, specifically in social media, they were talking about um, content. And the main thing is content. Uh, You may have heard content is king. Uh, Content is the thing that you need to really focus on. And um, that was big for a while. A lot of people really hammered that nail. And uh, then people started talking about, in the past couple of years, they've really started talking about consistency. They start talking about, well, you know, maybe quality isn't as important as being consistent. And that's a good point. Uh, you don't necessarily have to put top quality content out all the time. I mean, it has to be it has to be good. I mean, you can't just put anything out there. Um, but you shouldn't really so really worry so much about making it perfect as long as you you show up on time every day. So consistency has been kind of the buzzword for the last couple of years, and I think personally for 2019, I think that the next buzzword coming down the pike for uh, personal. Uh, creativity and getting out content is going to be distribution. It's going to be distribution for 2019 because people are focusing more on content. They're focusing more on consistency. And now I think what they're, what people are going to be focusing on next is going to be where all of this content lands. Uh, I have a lot to say about the distribution. So I'm going to separate that for another episode. And this time I'm just really going to focus on Uh, Just what to say and how to say it. So when we're talking about content and we're talking about what to say, a lot of people kind of struggle with that. They say, uh, you know, okay, I have a blog. I want a blog. I want to be able to reach out and talk to people and and get my voice out there. We're good for you because 99% of all people who use the Internet are just consumers. There are not a lot of creators out there. If you're a creator, you are one of the 1%. 
Um, the 1%, the people who create content, those are the ones who run the conversations, who start the conversations. They are the ones who are the influencers. Good for you. You can't be an influencer unless you're creating content. So if you're doing that, half the battle is won. But uh, what to say? What, what do you even say? I mean, I won't know I want to say some things, but I don't know exactly what to say. Well, you know, you're not the only person to struggle through that. I think everybody does at one time or another. So I have a few suggestions. So uh, what to say? I think that the most important thing whenever you're talking about uh, what to put on your blog post or what to put on your podcast is really to kind of find something you know about. Uh, if you know a lot about something, uh, you know, you're passing that knowledge along to others, it's a great thing to do. Or you can find something you're passionate about. Find something that, that really kind of kind of what you want to discuss with other people. Um, and, you know, it could be a lot of anything. It could be sports. It could be politics, whatever. I mean, find something you're passionate about. Uh, the best thing really is to kind of find both. It's find something that you know about and you're passionate about. And a lot of people think they know about <laughs> things. Uh, and that's fine too. I mean, if you think, you know, a lot about things, just uh, get your voice out there. That'll be fun. Uh, so the best thing is to really find both. There are three questions that you can kind of ask yourself if you're still kind of struggling with that. And the first question is, you know, what's trending, uh, right now, what are people talking about whenever, um, you want to put a blog post or a podcast out and you want to kind of be timely, think about what's trending a couple weeks ago, for example, LinkedIn released uh, a statement that said that they're going to start doing live video. And uh, a lot of people really jumped on that. And they said, oh, look, LinkedIn is starting to do live video. So what did they do? Well, they made a video about LinkedIn doing live video. The only thing that I don't like about that sort of thing, really, is that there are a lot of influencers out there who will jump on whatever is hot, uh, whatever new announcement comes down the pike, and immediately, it's the greatest thing since life spread. Oh, LinkedIn video is going to be so great, man. LinkedIn live video for business to business and B2B marketing is going to be awesome. Yeah, I, I heard that like the first day it was out, right? And daggone it, you know, I, I understand why influencers do this. I really do. But I wish they wouldn't do it because it drives me insane. Because they jump on bandwagons whenever the, you know, because they want to be first to say how great everything is. And sometimes it's just not that great. Uh, Anchor, when it first came out, was the same way. Anchor, everybody loved Anchor. Whenever it first came out, it was glorified voicemail. It sucked. It was terrible. But you had all these influencers, and they were like, yeah, man, it's going to be great. It's going to revolutionize everything. And it didn't. It didn't. Now, it has now because it's changed. It's a distribution network now and a podcasting network rather than what it was trying to be. Wasn't sure what it was trying to be at the very first. And now I, I love it a lot. And, and we've talked about this uh, a whole lot. As far as LinkedIn video or LinkedIn live video, and I'm not going to get into this too much, but I do want to say this. Yes, it's probably got good potential. If you want to know my opinion on it, it's probably got good potential. But eventually there's a law of diminishing returns. Uh, when you talk about live video, you know, you have the Periscope and you have the Facebook live and you have the YouTube live. And now you've got the LinkedIn live. Eventually, you know... With Instagram, television, and TV or whatever, I don't know whether that's a live thing. I, I don't really get into IGTV too much. But eventually, when every platform starts doing it, then it's not necessarily the greatest thing ever anymore. I mean, when you were the first person, when Periscope was first out, when Facebook Live started coming out it, right away, you know, that's when it was really, really earth-shattering. Now, eh, hey, another platform is coming out with live video. Eh, you know, if your audience is there, great. You know, if your audience isn't there on LinkedIn, you know, if you don't have an audience there, then it's probably not that exciting to you. That's the thing. Anyway. OK, so what's trending? Uh, think about that uh, when you want to talk about stuff. Uh, second thing is what's unusual. Maybe you want to go with the exact opposite of what's trending. Maybe you want to find out what's not trending. Find some quirky, unusual thing that kind of catches your interest and uh, kind of stands out for you. Maybe talk about that or maybe talk about um, something that's trending but isn't a popular opinion. If you zig when everybody else is zagging, I think that's that's something that people are going to stand up and take notice about. Find what's unusual. Find something that is not popular and spout off on that because that makes you stand out. You're not following the pack. Uh, you're standing out. You're kind of being a little rebellious and, and people want to know what that's all about. 
The third thing I think is to uh, kind of look at what's personal. I think this is important because you are a little bit more passionate about things that affect you personally. Uh, how does it affect you? you know, people relate to, you know, first person, I don't know, testimonials maybe, or I don't know if that's the right word. Just stories about about people and about your experiences. Uh, do what I did. This was in the same situation that I was in, and this is what I did. Or on the other hand, you know, don't do what I did. You know, I was in this situation and I did something. It was a mistake. Don't do this. What's personal to you is a good thing to use for blogging, for podcasts, that sort of thing. Because people really relate to one-on-one stories. They really relate on a personal level to people who are telling their experiences. So consider that as well. Whenever you're thinking about what to say, consider that you know okay so we've we've got three you know consider what's trending uh, consider what's unusual or consider what's personal if you follow those three questions uh, you know what's personal to me or what's trending or what's unusual to me that kind of piqued my interest uh, you'll come up with all kinds of different ideas so that's talking about what to say now once you figure that out then how do you say it the way i do it or the way i say i do it and i haven't done it <laughs> but the way that I say that I'm doing it is I've got three things. I've got the blog, I've got the podcast, and then I've got social media. Now, social media, I've covered. I've done social media a whole lot, and I'll continue to give you tips on on how to do things on social. But the blog, the podcast, uh, there are certain tools, there are certain techniques that you could use in order to say things effectively, especially with your blog, for example. When you're doing a blog, you're doing a blog post, you've got uh, your story out there. It's a personal story or a trending story, and you're really happy with it. Uh, Don't just throw up your first draft. Make sure that it reads well. Make sure that uh, when you read it over or when a reader reads it, it's kind of redundant, when a reader reader reads it. (laughs) Anyway, when when a reader, when a person who comes up on your blog, whenever they read it, uh, just make sure it reads well. Uh, Make sure that your writing style is good. Uh, Make sure that your grammar and your punctuation are on point. Yeah, I know I'm not your English teacher, but your English teacher said this for a reason because it's important, especially now. If you are writing something, especially an article, your grammar and your punctuation and the way that you say things is important because it lends you credibility. If you are, and I'm a big, I'm a big stickler for this and a lot of people kind of get on me about it, but I can't help it. You know, I was uh, one of these uh, I was a journalism major the first time I went to high or went to college. So um, grammar, writing, that sort of thing is important to me. Your writing style, for me, you know, I like a writing style whenever I write that is conversational, uh, but it's informative as well. Uh, you may want to be a more formal writer or you may want to kind of write a little bit more trendy, and, you know, and I don't know. It, it's different. People's writing styles are, are different than uh, from one another, and that's great. Um, But there are tools that you could use, and the tools that are my favorites, there's two of them that are my favorite. Uh, The first one is ProWritingAid, and if you look at it, it's uh, ProWritingAid.com, P-R-O-W-R-I-T-I-N-G-A-I-D, it's one word, dot com. The reason I like it, and it's very similar to like Grammarly or Hemingway, uh, you may have heard of some of those, is because this not only checks your grammar, but it checks your style, it checks repeats, it, it has a thesaurus. It's very good. It really kind of checks a lot of things other than just your grammar. I use it basically every time I write a blog post. Uh, I use Pro Writing Aid in order to kind of run it through and see if I've repeated myself a few times or if uh, some of the words or or sentences, I mean, that uh, I write or the paragraphs that I write are too long or they're hard to understand. Um, There's a reading scale on there that's very nice. So it's very good for you to kind of Look over, and it's not going to write it for you, but it's going to point out little things that maybe you might be able to do to write better. Uh, So that's the first one that I really, really like. If if you don't like Pro Writing Aid, like I mentioned, a Grammarly or Hemingway or two other online tools, they're both free, and and both of them are very good as well. But I prefer Pro Writing Aid. The second one that I really like that I can't afford right now because it's expensive. (laughs) It really is expensive, but it's so good. It's called WordRake, W-O-R-D-R-A-K-E, WordRake. And I think it's WordRake.com. I'm, I'm not sure. It may be org, but I think it's .com. Uh, man, I love this. It is a plug-in for, uh, for Word. Uh, you can also use it on a, on a Mac. 
But man, it's just so good because it makes your writing so much tighter. It's less academic. It cuts your unnecessary verbiage. Like if you're one of these people, and I am this way sometimes, especially if you're writing, if you get used to writing um, papers for school, for college and things like that, uh, those papers should not sound like your blog, really. You know, your blog should be different. Mine is different. I want to make sure that there's not a whole lot of flowery speech and unnecessary words. And you know, sometimes, and I used to work for a college, so I used to write, you know, copy for collegiate um, recruiting and things like that. And a lot of times people, if you go to college websites, they'll just go on and on and on about uh, how great they are. And sometimes the wording is just so long and drawn out and it's, it's just not very good. So word rake, what it does is it takes those unnecessarily long phrases and just breaks it down to just tell us what you're trying to say in very specific terms. It's amazing, but it's expensive and I can't afford it. And when I can afford it, I will get it. But right now I can't and I'm sad. <laughs> but uh, hey, you know, they do have a trial. They've got a seven day trial and you may like that. I mean, I liked it. I liked it so much that uh, I was sad whenever it was gone. So in any case, uh, that's the... That's what to say. That's how to say it. Just kind of wrap it up. Um, I don't know. I guess that's the first of two that I'm going to do because I want to talk about distribution in its own episode because there are so many different things that you could do with distribution. Uh, the reason that I want to do that in a separate episode is because there's just so much to it. But I'll touch on it really quick because uh, now that I'm doing, I'm doing a blog or trying to do a blog and doing a podcast and I'm doing social media and there's so many different channels and a lot of people get kind of, I don't know, confused or they get overwhelmed and they say, you know, I've, I've got all these different channels that I could distribute to. Well, in the next episode, we're really going to try to drill down, you know, what different kinds of places that you can put your message out there. For example, I mean, I've got uh, 16 different platforms that I'm running the web, the, um, the webcast, the, uh, the, um, podcast on i've got so many different social media channels that uh you know do you use a scheduler well you know sometimes you can use a scheduler sometimes it's not very good to do it I, so we'll talk about that in the next episode but uh, for now you know let's just cover you know what to say how to say it kind of get those things down and then in the next episode we'll talk about where to say it and we'll talk about all kinds of distribution channels i think you'll like it okay so that's about it for now yeah i know um you missed me and i missed you but I'm back and uh, we'll see. I'll try really not to be how as long as I was, you know, away from the thing. Like I said, you know, it's one of these things where I talk, I talk about consistency and I talk about putting out good content, but I, I have not walked the walk recently. I'm going to start trying to go on a little bit of a schedule. It, it's crazy because I've been working on some other things that really don't have anything to do with uh, digital media, um, some financial issues, some other personal issues that I'm kind of working through that's taking up a lot of my time right now. So yeah, you know, but these things will take care of themselves. I'm working on them now. And as soon as things get under control there, I'll probably be able to do a lot more of this stuff. Um, so the package, yes. Uh, where can you find me? You can find me on 16 different networks now. It's no kidding. I mean, it's crazy. Let me run them down for you. You can find me at anchor, at Apple Podcasts, at Google Podcasts, at Spotify, at Breaker, CastBox. Oh, I finally got on CastBox. Um, also Overcast, Pocket Casts, Podbean, Radio Public, Stitcher, TuneIn, Spreaker, Blueberry, SoundCloud, and MixCloud. That's a brand new one as well. I'm pretty excited about this one. Um, on Twitter, you can find full episodes there at Tim Atkins Online. Also, Facebook full episodes I'm putting out on my channel at Click Beetle Digital Marketing and also at Tim Atkins Online, which is my Tim Atkins Di Digital Strategist page. LinkedIn, if, uh, if episodes are under 10 minutes, which this one won't be, then there'll be full episodes on LinkedIn. But uh, if they're not under 10 minutes, then uh, I won't put them on LinkedIn, but I will give you a link to that. Uh, YouTube, yes, full episodes will be there as well. That'll be at Click Beetle Digital Marketing. Uh, the Click Beetle Digital Marketing channel is where I put the full episodes on YouTube. Uh, the blog is at timadkins.com. There's not a whole lot on there right now. 
there's not anything on there that was wasn't there the last time you got there so uh you don't have to run there and say if there's anything new up that'll change eventually also uh working on the new business uh, that's something that i'm thinking about working on uh, i'm not even thinking about it this is something that will be worked on after i get all the other stuff taken care of that's going to be at clickbeetle.co there's not a whole lot there right now either but there will be social media branding and web design that's what i'm going to be focusing on for that that's going to be very exciting news and it's going to be starting locally and soon so follow me on Twitter at Tim Atkins Online, at Facebook at Tim Atkins Digital Strategist. And uh, if you download the Anchor app on your phone, you can also leave me a message and I might play it if you're nice to me. And if you're not mean, I don't play messages from mean people. <laughs> but if you're nice to me and you say, hey, Tim, I enjoyed the podcast or whatever, and give me a shout out, I may just give you a shout out right back. Hey, who knows? Anyway, OK, so hey, episode 10 in the books. Thanks for hanging out with me. Uh, episode 11 is coming down because uh, I've got notes on that too. I've already written the notes for uh, the distribution side of what you're doing. So it's going to be really cool. We're going to get excited about that as well. But in the meantime, thanks for hanging out with me. I will talk to you very soon. <laughs>